Hello, everybody. We're so glad uh, to have um, this group of people with us this morning. Um, we uh, have kind of a new ministry that's evolved over some time uh, because uh, the San Antonio Rush Commission has had to close in March uh, due to COVID. They um, have such close quarters, they are not able to protect the men from this disease. And so they decided it would be best to close for right now. So as things kind of happen, uh, ministries evolve and we still find a way to meet needs. And we've got a handful of people here that are going to help us learn a little bit more about what's going on with uh, some people call it our Wednesday ministry group, homeless ministry. But uh, Barbara's going to share a little bit with us of how we got started in this new ministry. Well, we were scheduled um, to serve a meal at uh, San Antonio Rescue Mission on a Friday night, as we have all been doing for some time. Everyone in this video and several others have been involved in that ministry. And we've grown very close to some of the, uh, the certainly the workers there, and also the members, the men. Um, it's, it's a warm fellowship. Um, and when they closed, we were devastated for them because we didn't know where they were going to eat. And it was Becky um, Upchurch's turn to cook. And we were frantically trying to figure out, well, we, could we deliver a meal? No, because they're not there. So a group of us met at the church and started uh, making sandwiches and things. And um, Vaughn Ballinger and Cindy Levesque made a trip downtown to see if they could find some of our men. And they did. They started handing lunches out on the street, but that was absolutely not workable for every week. And besides, we felt like it might be a little bit dangerous for them too. Um, so it evolved into a Wednesday morning um, lunch packing and someone else is going to talk more about that, but we have been doing it. We did it every week in March and April, and then we switched to every other week, um, and we've been doing that ever since, and we plan to continue until life gets back to normal. So that's how it started. Great. Thanks, Barbara. Cindy, tell us a little bit about what CAM is, what it stands for, and how y'all got partnered with them. CAM stands for Christian Assistance Ministry, and it's the, the website is christianassistanceministry.org. This is an organization supported by uh, donations by ch from churches, and their main function has been to provide food and supplies to needy families. But as you said, ministry evolves, and because of COVID-19, they recognize the need of the hundreds of homeless that are out there on the streets. So they started uh, kind of shifting their ministry and giving out uh, these paper sack lunches to the homeless. And now they wind up giving every single day two to 300 paper sack lunches and has a sandwich and some uh, a bottle of water and chips. And that is kind of, we, we discovered this when we, Vaughn and I were looking for a way of helping our homeless men from the rescue mission. The camp is very well organized and they're set up to just do this exact thing. They also, some other things they do is provide showers for the men and women and whoever is homeless uh, three days a week. And th so again, they, they still do their other ministry, which is helping needy families in the afternoons, but in the mornings are devoted to helping the homeless. The homeless can just walk right into the parking lot, get the meal, the, the paper sack lunch, and so uh, this is a fantastic thing that we decided to partner with them and help them in what they are already doing for the homeless. Wow, fantastic, Cindy, thank you. Becky, you kind of uh, keep a great spreadsheet of inventory and keep everybody kind of organized and focused on what's going on. Um, how does Woodland do all this with CAM? <clears throat> Well, when we meet on Wednesday mornings, there's a small group, seven to 10 people, mostly made up of people who usually go down to SARM anyway, uh, with a couple of others. Uh, we meet on the patio of Marsh Hall. We wear gloves, we wear masks, we social distance as we work. I'm the only one that goes into the kitchen. That's where we store our supplies. And I get there early and bring them out. 
And we have become what I call a well-oiled machine. We all know what we're doing and we just boom, 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 do it. There are uh, church members and community people even who drop by and bring supplies that we need. I'll talk about the items later, uh, but they bring supplies that we need. Uh, they drop off sandwiches. Uh, back in April or May, we made 400 hygiene kits, which went to um, CAM. We make a minimum of 200 uh, lunch bags, I'll call them, each week when we meet. Uh, they have different items in there, and the sandwiches are taken separately, but along with the bags. And CAM will hand out a bag after dropping a sandwich into it and give it out to the individual coming for lunch or a snack. Great, uh, thanks, Becky. Uh-huh. Oh, I'll let you finish. That was what I was going to say at this point. Okay, <laughs> very good. Thank you. Lee, we've heard a little bit about who benefits uh, from this ministry, um, joint ministry between Woodland and CAM. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about that. Who, who benefits? When I think about what we're doing, the story of the fishes and loaves comes so evident. Because when we hear that story of Jesus getting the materials and sharing it, it's always easy to think about the people who are fed. And yes, we are thankful to be able to help those men who receive the sack lunch, along with the scripture verse included. That's that's obvious and we're thankful to do that. But one of the things we've discovered was that volunteers and contributors are also very blessed by giving involvement. For instance, working together and being with one another, even though it's not too close together, we're safely distanced, we are in conversation and we are a team that says, you know what, we're making a difference. There's a sense of realizing what it was like when Jesus says, all right, disciples, Here's some food, now take it and share it. And when that happens, there is a sense of I'm doing something because it's the right thing to do. And in the midst of that, all of us are blessed because we are seeing God at work, not just through Woodland, but through other groups that are saying, we can do something in our community when we desire to do something, instead of saying we have nothing to offer. So for me, the fish and loaves is the story that all are blessed when we do the right things and the generous God we serve is involving us in being generous to others. Wow, thank you, Lee. Uh, Darren, could you tell us a little bit about how uh, people can help and what are maybe some other needs that CAM has uh, besides the ones about, you know, besides providing uh, sack lunches? Well, they have other needs besides <clears throat> what we're doing, but they um, have a great network. That's one of the things that CAM is known for is their ability to put this whole thing together. They have clothing. They have uh, a request for uh, clothing now, and they would like it to be sorted by size. And maybe like if you have like five shirts that are polo, let's say, and they're all together and you have just four and you would put those four large shirts together and then you would have four medium and then you know they they want it to come to them sort and segregate they don't want it to just be a a garbage bag full of loose clothes because they don't have a staff to do that sorting and everything once it's there they want to be able to have clean clothes where they can just bring it and stock it and uh, that's one of the things that's really nice is people accommodate them with what they ask for. Um, and it's kind of like we had uh, to label our peanut butter and jelly because found out that apparently some people are allergic to peanuts. So <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we have to also uh, think of the hygiene kits. They're also always looking for hygiene kits. Um, that's something that they hand out on occasion or as needed. Uh, one of the things that uh, was an oversight, not, not an oversight, but something that perhaps was um, due to COVID was something that was an, an, just a lack of funds. 
uh, their big gala was not produced or pro production was not being able to produce. So monies are important. So fundraising or anything that can be done, a check in the mail or contribution to be made would be probably grateful. Um, giving is important. And then uh, one of the things that I uh, see here uh, on their website, if you take a, take a gander, is they had uh, 400 children last year. I think they're looking at about 250 uh, you know, school is important, and right now we don't know what that new normal is going to look like for a lot of teachers. We know how difficult that might be, and everyone at Woodland seems to be in, in tune with uh, teaching and education. So I know that children and education is important, so we need to do our best uh, to make sure that everyone has what they need, and they have a, a great effort to put those backpacks together provide what they need, and they are distributing those backpacks through either their facility downtown as well as United Methodists up here off De Zavala. So they're doing their very best to make sure that everyone has backpacks with uh, what they need through the school district's uh, letter of request for each child. So what that might look like. Thanks, Karen. <clears throat> Becky, you mentioned a while ago, you were going to let us all know specifically the things that y'all need each week. Uh, That's right. And as you tell us about that, tell us what your schedule is so we know when we can come up there and y'all going to be there and we can drop stuff off. Okay. We have started meeting every other Wednesday. <clears throat> we're meeting on September 2nd. Is that that's next Wednesday, September 2nd. And then it will be every other Wednesday after that. Uh, we're there roughly from 8.45 to 10 o'clock stuffing bags. If people bring things to donate, we'd like for them to be there as close to 8.45 as they can, but we'll take things as long as we're there, but earlier is better. And it's really been fun to see other church members who've not been involved at the rescue mission donating items, driving by, dropping them off, making sandwiches, the things we need are sandwiches, either peanut butter and jelly or meat and cheese with no dressing, no mayonnaise or mustard in individual Ziploc bags. And then you can just stuff them back into the bread bag is a good way to do it. Uh, they transport well that well way. We also need, let's see, Fruit, individual fruit, apples, clementines, oranges are good. I'm sure fresh fruit is, fruit is very desirable. Or little fruit cups will go when we run out of fresh fruit. Uh, we also need chips, individual chip bags, individual peanut butter crackers. There's usually four or six to a packet. Um, a packet of cookies. We don't take any homemade food. Everything has to be store-bought, uh, not from a bakery, but packages of famous Amos cookies, for example. We get a lot of those. Then we also add a napkin and a Bible verse to each bag. Um, and we do at least 200 each time. So that goes through a lot of stuff. We would love for everybody in the church to bring by things uh, this coming Wednesday, 845. I just add things to my grocery list every week and I pick them up and I bring them up there and that's what we use. Uh, but it's been fun to see people outside of our group dropping things off. It's a great way to be a part of the ministry and uh, if, especially people who can't get too close. It's a great way to drop things off for that. And cash is also, well not cash to us, but donations to the church, we can use to buy things for our group, or they can be sent directly to CAM, whatever the big, biggest need is. Well, thank you all very much. We appreciate you serving in this way. We thank you for your uh, creativity and your way to follow God uh, through this ministry and, and sensing new directions. Um, thank you for serving some of our most vulnerable, pe vulnerable people in San Antonio. We appreciate you and we love you and uh, we pray for you and pray for those that you serve and um, and we pray that our church will continue to be involved with you. Thank you so much for sharing with us today.